inless in the month of April. He didn't pitch too poorly that month. He just needed some runs to help him through. Markham tries to go to 5-0 and for the month of May. He has won his last three starts and his ERA in his last six. is just over two runs a game. Mentioned the problems that he had against the Orioles in his career. He's 1-2 and two with an ERA of about six in nine career starts. Scouting report for Sean Markham. He's got pitches of plenty. He's got the curve, the slider change, a little bit of everything that he'll throw at the Orioles tonight. Make him swing. 67 innings pitched this year. He's only given up 15 base on balls, so you better be ready. And give me six. He is pretty much good for six innings in all of his starts but his last one. And as the last one, I think there's a reason why he only got five innings. Well, he had a few runs in cushion and there was no reason to extend him out there and let's take a look now at the defense behind Markham. There's the outfield tonight. Blue Jays come in here making 25 errors this season. The infield Encarnacion and Gonzalez who see them have been outstanding. John Buck and Sean Markham is tonight's battery and back in the lineup after a couple of days nursing a foot. Freddie Lewis back in the lineup here for Cito Gaston. Yeah, three days off. He sat down two games, had the off day yesterday, so he's taking some of the pressure off that right foot. He got a bunion on that foot that's been awfully painful for him, so hopefully that'll quiet down a bit. We're set to go here. Corey Patterson takes the first pitch from Sean Markham in there for a strike. We mentioned the last time that Sean Markham took the mound. That was that 12-4 win versus Arizona. In that game, he only pitched five innings. He left when it was eight to three. You mentioned the runs the Blue Jays had gotten for him. No need to go out and burn him out. Get him ready for tonight's start. Pop straight back. Mark him out in front. Ball and two strikes. You figure that Sean Markham is going to pitch late into several games, and there's your numbers against the Orioles in 11 games. He has been hit hard, as Pat mentioned. There are some guys in this lineup that have hit him hard. Marquecas, Tahad, and Adam Jones all have had good numbers against Sean Martin. Long drive, but foul out in front of that inside pitch. Corey Patterson, second go around with the Orioles. He was picked up. After spring training, and they brought him into camp, and he is now doing most of the work in left field. There's that changeup, the ever present changeup from Sean Markham gets his first strike out of the night. Well, the thing about Markham that makes him so impressive is he can throw the pitch at any time. It's a changeup. You see that grip that he has, and look at the depth and the movement on it. Totally fools Corey Patterson for tonight's first out. Ty Wiginton off to a great start this season. 13 home runs and 32 RBI. He's playing at first base tonight, but he's done the majority of that offensive work starting at second. Swings at the first pitch and drives it into center field. Vernon Wells will have to get over and cut it off, and he does. Wiginton trying for two, throws on the money, tag in time. Wigginton protests, but what a tag and a throw as Vernon Wells threw a one-hop strike to Aaron Hill, who put the tag right on the base. That's what you have to do as an infielder when you're receiving the ball from the outfield. Wells gets over quickly, doesn't take anything for granted, and throws a strike. Watch how he catches the ball and gets it right down in the dirt right away and gets the out call from the second base umpire, Todd Tishner. This play is right out in front of Wigginton. Tries quickly to get into scoring position. The first thing that I saw, Buck, was just how high his foot is going into the base, and I think that allowed him to be tagged by Hill. Now Dave Tremblay has come out to argue the first opportunity to defend Wigginton as he made it out to the second base umpire, but Vernon Wells threw a great one-hop throw to Aaron Hill, who turned around and went right for the bag, didn't try to find the runner, tried to find the bag, and it proved to be a right move. Dave Tremblay in his fourth season, and he's had a rough go of it, just 15 and 33 to this point. Well, Nick Markakis with two outs. Yeah. 
Archaic is up over 300. One of the good young players in all of baseball. He has become a more patient hitter at the plate. Teams try to pitch around Nick Marquecas because they know how good he is. There is his numbers against the Blue Jays in 71 games. He'll take the walk when you give it to him. I think he really misses Brian Roberts at the top of that line. Yeah, Brian Roberts has been out all year there, all-star second baseman, just now starting a rehab assignment down in Sarasota. But oftentimes when Marquecas was at the plate, Roberts was on the bases somewhere. And Adam Jones was hitting just ahead of him. So you got a lot of speed, a lot of talent hitting ahead of you. He had lots of RBI situations, and he always came through. A ball and two strikes on the ground. Fair ball. Overdale step on the bag. Good inning for Sean Mark and get some defensive help from Vernon Wells, who comes down Wiginton. Three up, three down here in the first. Returns to that leadoff spot. Hill, Linden Wells, then the change. Jose Bautista moves up to the fifth spot, second time this year. And then Alex Gonzalez. Gonzalez has hit the Orioles hard this season, five for 13, including a two home run game on the Sunday game back in April to sweep that series. So uh, Bautista is in five spot. Now Overbay drops down to seven ahead of Buck and Incarnation. They'll be facing Kevin Millwood looking for his first win of the season. Hard to believe, isn't it? This is his 11th start of the season. Still looking for that first win. 0-4 with a very, very good ERA of 371. Really plagued by poor run support. Fred Lewis takes the first pitch just off the plate outside. Millwood has done just exactly what they had hoped he would do when they signed him. He's given stability in the rotation. A veteran presence, and he just hasn't been able to cash in any doubles. Well, with so many young pitchers coming up through their system, they needed a guy at the front of that rotation to kind of lead them and guide them, like you say. He has pitched well. He just doesn't get any runs, and he doesn't get any wins because of it. One and one to Fred Lewis. Fastball in there for a strike. Good to see Lewis back in the lineup. He has been such an important part of this offensive Approach for Cito Gaston and missed those two days and then had the off day yesterday. Up the right side. Safe. The foot looks good to me. Yeah, looked pretty good about a halfway down the line. He turned it on to another speed and just outran the baseball. That's what he brings to this lineup. Some speed at the top of the lineup. Here is the replay, and he clearly beats it for an infield single. Uh, Scott Moore starting at second. Didn't recognize the speed of Fred Lewis, and he is clearly safe. Ball not yet in the glove of Wigginton. Good way to start. Good sign, and that foot feels okay. A 
Aaron Hill with Lewis at first. Good job, Sam. Something we'll keep an eye on tonight. Kevin Millwood does not have a very good move to first base, and he's very deliberate towards home plate. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Blue Jays try to take advantage of that and steal a few bases. Now he's going to try to vary his times and give Matt Wieters a chance to throw. Wieters, the catcher behind the plate, has a strong arm, but he's got to have some help from his starter. How much does the base runner at first serve as a distraction to the pitcher and then play into the hand of Aaron Hill here? Well, I, I think a veteran like Millwood, it shouldn't bother him. He's been in this situation time after time. I think it's more of a problem for a young catcher like Matt Wieters. Maybe you start putting that number one finger down a few more times, signaling you want more fastballs to try and get the guy at first base if he tries to steal. Catchers wouldn't do that, would they? No. <laughs> Two balls in the strike there, and he'll. Lewis with a good lead. There he goes. Pitch outside. Throw from Wieters. On the money, but it came out of the glove. Ball's on the ground. Fred Lewis dislodged the ball from Scott Moore's glove. It looked like he had the ball in his glove for a moment. Fred Lewis is a very aggressive baseball player. Aggressive down the line, and now he's going to have an aggressive slide. Straight steal. He doesn't look back. And you can see from that replay, the ball beats him, hits his glove, and he tries to get it in the dirt and knocked it out of his glove. Stolen base number four for Lewis. He's now in the scoring position for Aaron Hill. Good cut on a fastball. A couple of defensive lapses early on by the Orioles have given the Blue Jays a early scoring opportunity. Scott Moore came up as a third baseman. He is only playing his second game at second base. Another reason why the Orioles miss Brian Roberts, who is an excellent fielder at second base. He lays back on the ball from Fred Lewis, and he beats it out, and that time drops the throw from Weeder. Three balls, two strikes. Nobody out here, bottom of the first. In a situation like this, you would expect Aaron Hill just to swing away and not try to do anything fancy the way he's been struggling. And I'm sure Cito Gaston would like him just to think about driving in the run. He's got plenty of protection behind him. Yeah, don't think about trying to massage the ball to the right side of the infield. It's the first inning. You've got a guy in scoring position. Go ahead and see the ball and try and drive him in. They had Aaron Hill out here working early today, trying to get himself started a little bit earlier. Breaking ball, base hit to left field. Fred Lewis is getting the go-ahead. Corey Patterson hits the cutoff, man. Lewis scores a throw to second, not in time. <laughs> Brian Butterfield challenged the arm of the left fielder. Lewis wasn't even the third when he gave him the wave home. Well, you have to. You have to run on Corey Patterson, and one of the reasons why you do that is he really lays back on this ball from Aaron Hill. Here's the timing mechanism. He gets it ready. A looping curveball that's ripped to the right of Corey Patterson. Watch the left fielder lay back on this ball. He can't charge it. He can't charge it. He gives ground and then still tries to throw the ball home for some reason. Should have known that the runner at second base has a lot of speed. That ball should have gone into second base. Hill alertly recognizes that that throw was going home and gets himself in a scoring position. Blue Jays up one to nothing. Adam Lynn steps in. I don't think there's more pressure on a pitcher than to have runners at second base. I think it's even worse than giving up home runs. You keep the line moving, have that guy in scoring position. Down the left field line, twisting out of play. Well, just think about if that throw does come into second base. Aaron Hill is standing on first right now. And Aaron... Adam Lind is at the plate. You get a ground ball and quickly you erase the base runners. But now he's got to start all over like he was facing Aaron Hill just a few moments ago. Now Millwood out in front of Lynn. Oh. 
by ball center field. Aaron Hill going back to second. Jones deep in center field. Hill's going to try to move up. Throw is off the mark and he advances. What aggressive base running by the Blue Jays early in this game. And Aaron Hill is not standing at third base with one out if he doesn't do this. Reads the ball that Patterson is laying back on it and then puts his head down and comes hard in the second base. A good aggressive slide. Gets himself in the scoring position. He's now at third base with less than one out and a chance for his teammate to pick him up. Vernon Wells with Hill at third. Now the infield will play in. We mentioned how few runs Millwood is getting in support, and they can't afford to fall too far behind. So Wells has a great opportunity here against Millwood in the first. One out. Breaking ball on the corner. Very difficult to bring your infield in in the first inning, but that reflects the struggles the Orioles have had of scoring runs. That is a telltale sign, isn't it, here in the first? Runner at third, less than two outs. On the ground, Hill has to hold as Duras retires Vernon Wells. And now Hill will stand at third with two outs. And before he faces Jose Bautista has been moved up into that RBI spot. Let's take a look at the scouting report. He's got great mound presence when he's out there. Doesn't ever get rattled. He's got a heavy sinking fastball. We saw it right there against Vernon Wells to get the ground ball. And he's got movement and command. I think the whole key for Kevin Millwood is his breaking ball. Can he throw it over for strikes? Jose Bautista to right field. Marquecas on the run. He's not going to get it. It's off the wall. Hill comes in to score. Bautista around second. He's headed for third. The relay for Moore. Late. He's going to come home. Here comes Bautista. Millwood doesn't have a play. Well, it's just been an ugly inning for the Baltimore Orioles defensively. You put pressure on the team with your speed, and they did it here all inning long. Well, first of all, Bautista in the number nine or number five hole cashes in the run with that ball off the wall. Marquez does a good job getting it into young Scott Moore, but he's going to hit. Throw the ball away. It didn't look like it hit Bautista, and he'll be charged with an error. As Bautista comes in with the third run this inning. And you can't coach that play from third to home. Bautista just instinctively bounced to his feet and scores the third run of the inning. Ground ball off the bat of Alex Gonzalez. His stores to first, but big inning for the Blue Jays in the first. They score three runs against Kevin Millwood, the defense making a contribution. But Jose Bautista drives in a run, then scores on the air by the second baseman. Three-nothing Blue Jays.
Mondays on Roger Sportsnet. Brought to you by your local independently owned home hardware or home hardware building center. Homeowners helping homeowners. Blue Jays jump all over the Orioles in the bottom of the first inning. They committed an error. Fred Lewis got the inning started by hustling down the first baseline for an infield hit. Aaron Hill advanced a couple of times on the bases and Bautista cashed everything in. First pitch swinging into center field. Tejada has a leadoff single. I think the Baltimore Orioles know that Sean Markham is going to be around the plate three times now the first four batters that they have swung at the first pitch. Tejada with the second base hit of the ninth. And Tejada is now 8 for 17 in his career against Sean Markham. They mentioned there are some real tough hitters in this lineup for Markham. Luke Scott in the fifth spot. He's been out a couple of days with a sore shoulder. He's got some pop. Nine home runs so far this season. Do for a ball on Sunday. Strained his left shoulder. Has been out ever since. Took 25 swings off of a tee yesterday down in Baltimore. Pronounced that he is healthy and back in the lineup. No balls in a strike. Tejada at first with the leadoff single. Change it out in the front. You mentioned that the Orioles have come out swinging against Markham and he is the type of guy that can pick up on that and make appropriate changes whether he goes to a first pitch changeup or a first pitch curveball he's got a lot of weapons to defuse that well it looks like the first time through he's going to put fastball first pitch fastball in the mind of the Orioles and then as the game goes along we'll probably see him change up a little bit and throw off speed pitches early in the count Upstairs with the fastball. The ball and two strikes. Sean Markham, as we had mentioned, four and one on the season. The very impressive ERA at 282. The thing that I like about Markham, his last five starts have come against after a Blue Jay loss. And he's won four of them. Yeah, he has truly been the stopper and maybe the most impressive game in that regard was at Fenway Park after the Blue Jays lost the first two games had combined 15 walks and a hit batter in the first two games and Markham came out and threw a two hitter at him for seven innings. Two balls two strikes on Luke Scott. Off the end of the bat over Gonzalez into left field. Luke Scott's aboard. Back to back base hits now for the Orioles here in the second. Well, it's been a nice streak for Sean Markham. Over his last six starts, this is what he has done 4 0 with an ERA just over two. Opponent's batting average, excellent. Remember in April when he wasn't getting any runs? He would pitch a great ball game, wouldn't get any runs, nothing to show for it. Now, Blue Jays are scoring eight runs a game for him. Now in the first of those six games started at Skydome against the Red Sox. He lost a tough one nothing game allowed just four hits over seven innings. Pat Waiters the catcher takes the first pitch strike from Sean Markham. Waiters in his first full season. He's the opening day catcher for the Orioles this year. First and second, nobody out. Blue Jays out in front, three to nothing. Leaders one for three against Markham. Markham. And have an awful lot of experience against Weeders. And he is a guy that can exploit weaknesses when he has a pattern to go from. And he misses with that pitch off the plate.
Sean only pitched in five innings the last time out against the Diamondbacks. That came on Sunday. He was staked to a big lead, and after five innings, Cedar Guest said, you know what, we got a chance to rest him a little bit here, and they did that. It's a long year. You know, he's going to make 30, 32 starts, so why not when you get a chance, give him a little bit of a blow. There's a good off-speed pitch. In that game, I looked in the numbers, Buck, and he threw 103 pitches in that game to get through five innings. The Arizona Diamondbacks fouled off 24 of those 103 pitches. You add that to the eight strikeouts he had in the game, you can see why his pitch count rose so quickly through five innings. Blue Jays scored him a lot of runs, and that afforded him to get out of there and get the win. Two and two. Be a full count here, missed with that changeup. See the wheels spinning with Markham now as he's trying to figure out where to go next. Sort out his thoughts, make a good pitch, get a ground ball. Scott's at first, Tejada's at second. They both single. Foul back. Had him reaching for a pitch outside. Well, he can change speeds, take a little off, put a little on. You can keep that ball away right here. Stay away from the power of Matt Weeder. He's big, he's strong, six foot five. He's got a long swing, but if you stay away from him, maybe you'll get him a little antsy and maybe roll over on a pitch and get a ground ball. Another full count pitch to the Orioles catcher. Jammed him. He's the cutter inside. Interesting to watch John Buck go through the sequence of signs. As we've not seen him do this often, but he's using an outside indicator before he gives the signs. Miguel Tejada, veteran at second base. John Buck trying to protect the pitcher's selection and location with Tejada out there. You know, this is a common practice around baseball. You just have to be proactive as a catcher. You see the Boston Red Sox do that a lot. Change up got him. Boy, what a sequence of pitches. He busted him inside with the cutter and then ran that change up away. And he just wasn't going to give in to him. He was going to make him hit his best pitch, and that is the off-speed change up. Really had the timing of Matt Weeders messed up on that pitch. You can have all the scouting reports you want. You can look at all the video you want, but you can't slow yourself down long enough to hit that changeup. Adam Jones adding in the seventh spot tonight. 13 game hit streak average up to 259. Batting with two on and one out. Blue Jays scored three in the bottom of the first. John Buck asked for time to start the sequence of pitches again. So when you talk about outside indicator. He's going to touch different parts of his body to tell Sean Markham which number he's going to put down and use. Now it's interesting because those numbers on the outside, those spots, the mass, the chest protector, the leg, those can be the signs. It can be the first spot you touch, the second spot you touch, your third. Or they can be the indicator. First spot I touch is going to be the first sign I give with my fingers. So there's a million ways to disguise the signs. You can see he's watching Adam Jones as well, just making sure that nobody's looking where he's set up. But there's the sequence, and now the fingers. 0 and 1. Foul at the plate. Normally they'll go through that before the game and say, "Hey, if there's ever a guy at second base, I'm going to flash you some signs and first sign after two, or the second sign, or whatever." There's a million different ways. You don't generally see them go outside themselves to give the indicator. Well, Veritek is the one that does it more than anybody, yeah. and he's so paranoid and he wants to protect his pitcher so much that he is very conscientious of doing that. But there's the outside indicator, and then we'll follow it with the fingers. Oh, and two to Adam Jones. Foul back. I mean, it can really be as simplified as. 
Mask is a fastball. Chest protector is a curveball. Leg is a changeup. And, and it's the last place I touch? The last place you touch, oh, the first, first place? place you touch, second place you touch. I mean, there's so many ways to disguise it. And then the fingers mean nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a million options. And when you go through this many gyrations and different combinations, this guy at second base, he gets disgusted and stops watching. Oh, and two. In the dirt, good block. John Buck and a very good job lately of smothering those balls in the dirt. Yeah, he certainly has gotten better. Watch him realize that this ball's out in front of him. You're not necessarily trying to catch this ball, but just keep it in front of you. Somehow tilt forward, knock that ball down. Good job there for John Buck keeping the double play in order. A ball and two strikes, one out. No foul at the plate. Yeah, I can sympathize with you, Mr. Buck. <laughs> You're going to take a little time to think about this next pitch he calls. And the umpire's going to help him out. Jim Joyce walked out to the mound. You okay, John? Yeah. He's fine. Gotta love it. Yeah, you gotta love it. <laughs> Victor Martinez got one on the toe the other day. Yeah, he hadn't played. He's supposed to play tonight because mm -hmm. Wakefield's pitching, but he hadn't played for a while. John Markham trying to get out of this second inning. Back to back singles to start, then the strikeout. Way outside. Interesting. I heard a description of the hitters in the American League East described as this is the patient division. Everybody makes you work. Everybody makes you throw strikes. Everybody wants to hit, but they're selective in their approach. Pretty universal throughout the division. Into the glove of Gonzalez. Line drive out. He almost threw that ball before he got back on the ground. That's how quick his hands are. I was watching him take batting practice today, taking ground balls during BP, and I've never seen hands as quick as Alex Gonzalez. You're right. He's in the air, and he's trying to throw the ball to Hill to try to complete the double play before he gets down to the ground. Right there. He literally tried to get a hold of it and throw it to second base, but he couldn't find the handle. What a player. The play he made on Wednesday afternoon in Anaheim, as good as I've seen. I, I asked Brian Butterfield about that today. He said he has never seen a finer play this season by any team, any position. Outfield, infield, catcher, pitcher, whatever. That play where base is loaded, infield in, and he got the ball and then somehow spun and threw to home from the back seat of his pants. Yeah, sitting down through a strike to the catcher. Scott Moore, the second baseman. He had an adventurous first inning. And now he would like a chance to redeem himself a bit with two outs here. Moore would charge with an air and lay back on an infield hit that opened up the inning. A ball and no strikes, two outs. You were talking about that play by Alex Gonzalez. Watch the runner at second base. That's Rivera. First of all, the great play. If Molina could have come up and thrown to third, look at where the runner is. He's about 70 feet from third. But you're taught as a catcher, boom, home to first, get the out. Sensational play by Gonzalez at shortstop. They could have been out of the inning if they had thrown it to third, but you can't fault anybody there. One and one, two outs here. Down the left side, but foul. Yeah, Gonzalez made a terrific play, and 
Brian Butterfield actually mentioned it when the ball was hit. He started to head toward the dugout exit, figuring that was it. But Gonzalez gloved it, and then from the seat of his pants threw a strike for the force. The throw, the, yeah. the throw was more important or more impressive than the catch. Catch was outstanding, but to be able to catch, turn, throw, and throw accurately, maybe Juan Rivera, the runner at second base, was thinking the game was over. Also, he just kind of hung around the bag. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Ball in the dirt. Another good block by John Buck. Scott Moore just called up from AAA Norfolk. Had a pretty good start to his season. 22 RBI with 34 hits. Pretty good production. But a bounce back for Sean Mark in the middle of the inning. Gave up back to back hits, but ends up stranding two. To just 15 wins on the season, and once again, the root of the problem is based from the mound. Well, it usually is. You know, when you're having a tough time of it, it usually starts on the mound, and the starters' ERA is 11th in the American League, team ERA 12, the bullpen right in there. Remember those great Oriole teams of the 60s, 70s, 80s? They won championships, they were in the playoffs in the early 90s. It was always built around four great starters. When you look back in the 70s, of course, they had that great team in 71 and had four 20-game winners, and it was always about the pitching. You know, Earl Weaver always, his mantra was, shut him out, and we'll figure out a way to come up with a run, and that's what they did. It wasn't that long ago that you boasted left-handed pitching like the man on the left there, Mike Flanagan, who's doing the television with Gary Thorne for the Orioles, but Mike Flanagan, who also pitched here in Toronto, former Cy Young Award winner, one of those vintage farm products from the Orioles that knew so much about pitching and did so well there for so long. But it's been uh, quite a different story over the last decade. Well they've tried to start all over again at uh, the minor league level by trading for drafting producing the starters and it's going to take some time. Two balls and no strikes to Lyle Overbay. It's a pitch down and in on the knees. Over may drop down to the seventh spot, and Cedar Gaston certainly stayed with him as long as possible. But given the way that Bautista is swinging the bat and the fact that Vernon Wells had slumped a little bit in May, he changed the lineup. Hopped up left side. Corey Patterson makes the catch. You know, and Cedar was saying before the game about that that he's cognizant of. Players and, and where they are and, and how they he wants to have them have good years, but he just said Batista swinging such a hot bat. I've got to get him in RBI situations, and it cashed in right away in the first inning. 
Yeah, and it's certainly uh, when you look at your lineup, and that's what a manager will do. Is just how in the world can you maximize the bats in this lineup? John Buck doing very productive down in the bottom third of the order. Eight home runs, 26 RBI. His career high for homers is 18. Pat, you can break it down from a hitter's point of view, the difference in the approach. I mean, you don't need to be an expert to see the difference in how much more aggressive John Buck is now. He's aggressive, and I think that goes with confidence. He looks very confident up there. His short, his swing is a lot shorter than it was at the beginning of the season. And it seems like he is staying back, seeing the ball. There's a good idea of right there, staying off that curveball. And then when he recognizes the pitch as a strike, he puts a good swing on it. One of the things I said to Dwayne Murphy at the beginning of the year that I didn't realize that he's got good hands. When he uses his hands short stroke with those those hands. He's a pretty dangerous hitter. Not to mention he's as big as a house. Yeah well that helps in being strong. <laughs> <laughs> two and two one out here. Bottom of the second. Got him to chase the breaking ball. Millwood picks up his first strike out of the night. Edwin and Carnes showing the third baseman in the ninth spot. Swings at the first pitch and drives it right field line. Marquez is with good speed, but he'll run out of room. Kind of shown had some stop in Arizona. I was just going to say he was pretty locked in, wasn't he? If you're ever going to have trade talks, I think I'd call up Arizona right now. <laughs> Except they got the pretty good third baseman themselves and Mark Reynolds. Look out. That was a little veteran message. You were diving out over that plate when you hit that ball down the right field line. This play fair. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> Edwin Encarnacion knows also that that inner half, the pitcher has to establish it. And then Millwood got him to chase a breaking ball up. Now most pitchers will allow you one side or the other. You know, you can have a half, and I'll take a half. But Millwood said, you know what, you're taking too much of my half. Yeah, yeah that's, my, <laughs> that's mine right there. I'm going to back you off. And then that opens it up for a little bit of everything else. Tejada at third. Big hop. Strong arm on the money. Millwood bounces back with a good inning. Three up, three down. Orioles trail three nothing.
Saturday, May 29th, the Orioles take on the Blue Jays, 107 p.m. Come down to Rogers Center early and visit the gate number 11. Interactive zone, inflatables, face painting, pitching cage, and much more. After the game, kids 14 and under can run the bases. 416-341-1234 for tickets. Or you can log on to BlueJays.com or stop by most Rogers Plus locations. Junior J Saturday against the Orioles. Cesar Asturias, former Blue Jay. These things off here in the third inning. How about Cesar Asturias and Michael Young in your Dunedin infield? Pretty good start. Vernon Wells was the center fielder. They were there together at the yes. same time? Who played second? They alternated every night. Did they really? Yeah, they went back and forth. Vernon Wells was the center fielder, and he grew up watching Cesar Asturias and Michael Young play the infield. And they all remain good friends, of course, but that's where they uh, really got to know one another at Dunedin. Wow. I, I didn't know that they were both there together. Yeah. At that time, of course, they had a Felipe Lopez in the system. He was a level above, and they had Alex Gonzalez, the original Alex Gonzalez shortstop. For the Blue Jays, he was in the big leagues. Elevated the fastball. Markham racks up his fourth strikeout. First time through the lineup. Now Sean Markham gave it up three scratch singles, but he has come back to get him with strikeouts this time. For Stewart, nice fastball. Went out here in the third. Blue Jays scored three runs in the first inning. Corey Patterson bunts it up the first baseline. Look at Markham. He could have made that play himself. Well, that's why Lyle Overbay can play so deep at first base because of the range that Sean Markham has. You usually see first baseman moving in right around the bag when you've got a speedy left-handed bunter at the plate. But because Markham can get over there and guard that line, Overbay can stay back and play at normal depth at first base. Uh, it makes so much sense when you have a guy like Corey Patterson that can take that drag bun up the first baseline. and You really can allow Overbay to stay back and mm -hmm. continue to have his range at first. Center field, Vernon Wells. Well, he steps back. Now he comes in to make the catch. Yeah, you don't know if he's going to bunt or not. So if you have a pitcher with that kind of range and you can stay back, Patterson's got some pop in his bat. He can rifle a ball right by the first baseman. And if he does on a line, that's going to be tri a triple. But you afford yourself a way to stay back on that ball. And your pitcher's got the whole right side of the infield. That's a, that's a bonus for the Blue Jays. Ty Wigginton, he singled in the first, but was thrown out at second by Vernon Wells trying to advance. Made a big wide turn at second base, and Vernon Wells threw a one-hop strike to Aaron Hill. A breaking ball on the knees. It looked like, in fact, looking at the replay, that Blue Jays might have got a break on the call. He'll take it. <laughs> Good way to start. Foul ball. Bucks had a kind of an interesting start to this game. Been hit a couple of times with a foul ball. Hit a couple of times, balls in the dirt. But he's well rested. He had a day off yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Jays actually played 33 games in 34 days. But now they have a very favorable schedule with Several off days in the month of June. Yeah, and it seemed like 30 of them were on the road, didn't it? The month of May? Yeah. Uh, they had a very heavy road schedule. Another ball well blocked by John Buck. Just seems as though he's getting more comfortable with this pitching staff. I think early on, I don't care how much you catch in spring training, the game action is different than what you see in exhibition. And I think he's got more comfortable with the break and the movement of all those starters. You know, receiving pitches, blocking balls in the dirt. 
Don't let anybody tell you that it doesn't matter that you've never caught a guy before because I think it does matter. Well, I asked John Buck about Ricky Romero specifically, and he said he's the hardest guy he's ever had to catch because of the movement. Change up, fastball cutters, everything's moving. 3 2. On the ground. Gonzalez deep at short. He's not going to have a play. Wiginton hustling out of the box, comes up with an infield two out single. Encarnacion went for it, but he couldn't get to it, and Gonzalez was just too deep and short. Well, the only way they were going to make that play is if an Encarnacion could come up with that ball. Once it got by the third baseman and got into that five, six hole, no chance for Gonzalez to get Wigginton, who looked like he was running towards first base on that half swing. Now Nick Marcakis grounded out the first base. Marcakis has great numbers against Sean Markham. He is now 9 for 21 against Markham. He hits with two outs. I saw Nick Marcakis come to the big leagues with the Orioles a few years ago, and in watching his development, in watching that of Travis Snyder, I see a lot of similarities. When they approach the ball, stay out over the big part of the field. That's when they're at their best. I saw Marcakis too when he first came up here, and I was like, there's no way that guy's going to hit. <laughs> I mean, it didn't look like he had a chance. But he has worked very hard. One day in particular, I was watching him about 2.30 out here take extra batting practice, and the BP pitcher was knocking the bat right out of his hands. But he's gotten bigger and stronger. I think he's one of the better hitters in the American League now. Fouls it straight back. Marcakis was a pitcher at junior college as well, and there was a chance he was going to be drafted as a pitcher. But when he came to the big leagues, I saw him take batting practice the day after he was drafted and, and you're right he was very slight and not very strong and he did hit some home runs but that would have been magnified in college because he had to lose mm -hmm. the bat mm -hmm. as you can see his career numbers are pretty impressive this fifth season but the similarities I see in Marcakis and Snyder are that they're patient at the plate. When Snyder swings at strikes and uses the whole field, the ball just explodes off his back. We saw that in the last road trip in the swing through Cleveland and Chicago when he really started to get it going just before he injured his wrist. Travis's plate coverage is a lot better now than what we saw in April. Marquez has had a good cut at that pitch, found it straight back. But Marquez, when he first came up, could hit off speed pitches fairly well and hit him to the opposite field. But they were wearing him out inside, just like you were talking about. That was batting practice yeah. that I saw. Yeah. But e after every time in the cage, he'd go over and talk to Terry Crowley and they'd talk a little bit, the hitting coach for the Baltimore Orioles. And then I saw him the next year and said, Ooh, <laughs> this guy's going to be pretty good. 2 2 to Marquez. Left field line, that ball is slicing into the seats. But now you're right, Marquez is in the upper echelon of hitters around baseball. Well, I think he's a total package as a player. He can steal your base if you need to. He plays a great right field. He's got a good arm. He'll hit for average. He'll hit for power. Driving big runs. Another 2 2 pitch. Wigginton at first, two outs. Center field. Easy play for Vernon Wells, and Markham gets Marcakis. Through three innings, Sean Markham has shut out the Blue Jays. They lead it 3 0.
take a look at the Baltimore defense. Corey Patterson in left field, Adam Jones in center. Nick Marcakis in right field. There's the infield. First to third, Wigginton Moore is Stewart and Miguel Tejada. Kevin Millwood and Matt Weeders, the youngster behind the plate. Three nothing. Blue Jays lead Fred Lewis will bat for a second time. He got everything going with an infield hit in the first. Hit a routine ground ball to the second baseman, Scott Moore, but just hustled down the line and beat the throw. Then he stole second base. Thinking about that play on the turf here, I wonder if young Scott Moore laid back thinking that that ball was going to get to him a little bit quicker. And we know from playing here now about six weeks or so, eight weeks, that this play, this field plays very slow. It's not as fast as it looks, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And he did get caught a little flat footed. But that's the advantage of this being the Blue Jays' home field. A ball and two strikes. The comeback fastball gets him. Boy, that's a patented Atlanta Braves pitch, isn't it? That's where Millwood grew up with the Braves. Had some great years with the Atlanta Braves. Twice he won 18 ball games. You get that batter looking out over the plate, then you buzz this two-seam fastball in on him. Lewis gives ground, but it comes over the inside part of the plate for a strikeout. And Hill had a hit in an RBI in his first at bat. Also scored a run. So going to drive to right field. Marcakis takes a couple of steps back, then sets himself and makes the catch. Kevin Millwood looks like he is settling in nicely after that first inning. All right, six in a row. Now you mentioned Millwood and his experience. He grew up in that brave system and watched Maddox, Smoltz, and Glavin pitch for so many years, and he is really the consummate professional. First pitch swing, Adam Lynn hits it toward the end of the bat. Easy play for Adam Jones. Three up, three down in the third. It's like Millwood straightened himself out. May 29th through the 30th, the Blue Jays versus the Oils. All you can eat Lester's hot dogs, popcorns, nachos, peanuts, and soft drinks. Tickets start at $39. For more information, call 416 341 1234 or bluejays.com. Log on and get your tickets, and it's a big, popular place tonight. Lots of people at Lester's all you can eat section. Miguel Tejada takes the first pitch for a strike. He singled in his first time up, was stranded in the second. Way 
went after a breaking ball. Jim Wolf, the first base umpire. 0 oh 2 on Miguel Tejada. We're in the fourth inning. Blue Jays scored three in the bottom of the first. Tejada gets another base hit to center. On an 0 2 pitch, went down and golfed it into right field. He's two for two tonight. And speaking of two for two, I've seen this guy get two for two more than once over the course of his career. Robbie Alomar. Robbie, welcome. Good to have you back Thank in you. Toronto. It's nice to be back. What brings you to town? Well, I have a clothing line coming out and second call, second to none by Roberto Alomar. And I'm promoting it. So uh, looking for it so people can come and see it and, and buy it. Only second to none. That would be yeah. appropriate. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> they better know me, man. <laughs> what now, type of... Uh, uh, Outerwear, what, what type of clothing line is it? Well, we have dry fit clothing like this polo shirt that I have here that I'm going to gauge you Did guys. you bring that for me? Yeah, for you. Oh, and, uh, it's a present. Perfect. A Look at that. And uh, we have watches, uh, cologne. If you want to smell like Robbie Alama, you can buy that. Before a game or after a game? <laughs> <laughs> Before and after. You know, you, you know why he's so good in Major League Baseball? Because before I use cologne and after, I use cologne too. Perfect setup. <laughs> Now, that's great. So what prompted you to come up with this clothing line? This beautiful clothes, and obviously it's uh, casual wear, I guess you'd say, sports line? Yeah, sport line. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had jeans, we had shorts. We had kind of dry fit for uh, guys who play baseball, play hockey sports. My wife got me into it, and uh, she's, she owns a boutique at home, and now I'm doing my own stuff. That's great. And you're going to bring it to the Rogers Center? If they let me, I will. Perfect I have some, I, in, the, in the store, in the uh -huh. Blue store, we have some uh, yes. some products. And I brought you guys some, some watches. This is a limited edition watch really? that I have that I make. So uh, oh, that's I hope you outstanding. Guys, you, guys, you guys enjoy it. Thank you very much. That's so nice of you. You guys are always nice to me. So I have to be <laughs> nice to you guys. <laughs> well, it was easy to be nice to you, Robbie, the way you played the game. And so many people in Toronto love those five years you spent here. Talk a little bit about Cito Gaston. You know him very well. And I know we've had this conversation in the past about how much Cito Gaston taught yeah. you about hitting and about playing the game? Well, everything that I let the line learn about hitting when I was here in Toronto, uh, it was about, you know, because Cito Gasson taught me the way how to approach a pitcher, how to look for pitches, and I learned so much from him that that's why I was so successful uh, with my offense. You know, uh, I, I, I always say that he was my, my best hitting coach and that he always been my best manager. You were a good hitter before you got here. How did he? How did he take you to the next level? Well, um, he takes me to the next level, believing on myself. That's the number one thing. You have to believe in yourself that you can become a better hitter, and getting to know the pitchers, uh, looking for pitches, uh, situations of the game, and uh, I think he taught me, and he mentally he prepared me for that. We know that you're doing the clothing line now, but. Is there a day we're going to see Robbie Alomar back on the field? I would love to do it next year. I think I'm I'm I'm, I'm ready for it. Uh, I would love to do it with the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, this is uh, where, where where I belong. Uh, Blue Jay, you know, Toronto is like my second home, and uh, if I'm going to do something. I will do it here, and I think I'm ready now. Would you want to get involved as an instructor, a coach, a major league coach, or? I would what? like to be like, in, uh, or you want to manage like a Robin instructor. <laughs> wow. I don't want that headache. <laughs> smart. I always said you were the smartest player I ever played with. <laughs> I can be managed outside. It's easier. <laughs> but I would like to be like a, a Robin instructor, and uh, you know, teach the guys about the game. Uh, I think the Blue Jays now. I love the way they play in the game now. They playing with defense, uh, with pitching, and they, they learning how to play the game. Uh, there's not been a lot of uh, big, big numbers uh, offensive-wise, but that tells you that you don't have to hit to win games. You can do the little things right to win games. Your brother is a coach now with the Indians. Did yeah, that give you a little incentive to see, <laughs> you know, to see what he's doing? Or no, oh, you know, I, I think Sandy he's going to be a manager one day. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I can be a good manager. Uh, I, I, I like, I like to to teach what I know about the game and hopefully one day uh, I can be I can be a coach but I, I would not like to manage good decision <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work I can speak for that 
One out here in the top of the fourth, first and second. Adam Jones takes a pitch down. Two balls and no strikes, and John Buck's going to go talk about it. So what else is keeping you busy these days? Well, I'm uh, trying to get a contract with a company here, KR, KR3. They're a, comp a bad company from the, from Canada, and uh, they're in Cambridge. And uh, we're talking about contract, and hopefully I can be with them too. We design bats then and try to make products for them? Yeah, I'm going to try to design uh, like a, a Robbie Alomar line, introduce it to the to the Major League Baseball uh, and to, to amateur baseball, and uh, hopefully we go from there. Do you have more appearances involved with the uh, lineup here in Canada before you go back home? Yeah, I have more 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 exposure here. Yeah. This is... This is what I want to uh, become uh, people to know me, not as a baseball player, but as a businessman, too. And uh, I, 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 I'm glad. There's one second, two, and they did it just like Robbie Alomar right there. Beautiful. Aaron Hill runs six, four, three. Robbie, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to thank see you. you. Good thank luck you with guys. your clothing line, second to none. Thank you. All thank right. you, Bob. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, brother. Roberto Alomar, one of the best. Blue Jays lead it. equipment drive. It's in support of the Rookie League. This weekend, May 29th through May 30th, plays Jays and the Orioles. Bring down your baseball equipment and monetary donations. Gate 3, 5, 10, and 13 at pregame. You can make your contribution. 416-341-1234. BlueJays.com slash Rookie League or stop by most Rogers locations for tickets. Vernon Wells on the ground as Caesar is still a strong throw in time to get Wells. One out here in the fourth. That watch is really nice, isn't it? Very nice. Wow. Great to see Robbie, but boy, he's very generous with yes. his gifts, that's for sure. I'm sure he'll be successful with this yes. as well. And the line called second to none by Roberto Alomar. We got the blue for the Blue Jays on there, too. Jose Bautista hit a triple in his first at bat back in the first inning. That drove in the third, second run of the inning. He would bounce up and score on the throwing air by the second baseman. You mentioned that Kevin Willwood had sorted himself out. Actually, he was the victim of some shaky defense behind him more than anything. Well, you take away the... Uh the Fred Lewis infield single or when he was stealing the base the throw looked like it beat him and then the Aaron Hill base hit uh, if Corey Patterson doesn't lay back on that ball he is at first base this could be a one to nothing ball game there's a fastball right at the knees Batista thought it was a ball Batista's ball was well hit no question about it it went over the head of Mark Hakus off the wall and right 
Missed with the breaking ball. One out walk. You know, it's not like Kevin Millwood has pitched poorly in the month of May. He has made five starts this this month. His ERA is at five. He's got one loss and four no decisions. They have just had trouble scoring runs when he is on the mound. Alex Gonzalez grounded to short to end the first. Gonzalez has already made a fine defensive play. Got a line drive off the bat of Adam Jones in the second. That seems to be a nightly occurrence. Alex Gonzalez making a good defensive play. What did Terry Francona tell us when we were in Boston that uh, when we, we met with him, he said he's going to do something twice a week, was it? That's what Mike Lowell told Terry Francona okay. when they got Alex Gonzalez. He said he would do something at least once a week that you haven't seen before defensively and that's been pretty true with what we've seen from him I've seen two in the last two games <laughs> <laughs> and it's another very subtle move by Alex Anthopoulos the GM when he went out and signed Gonzalez right off the bat signed him very quickly locked him up with an option year for next year and Gonzalez never hesitated. He wasn't going to wait for the market to develop. I think he recognized Toronto was a good spot. He had a chance to come here, sign quickly. And in fact, he was working out with his friend Marco Scudero, who was playing shortstop here the last couple of years in Toronto. They were working out together when Gonzalez found out his agent had agreed to a deal. Line drive left field. Corey Patterson slides and makes the catch. Corey Patterson kind of got a late jump on that ball, but had the wheels to close ground, made the diving catch. He plays a very deep left field. If you watch Patterson, as you're right, he's got good wheels to close ground and pluck that ball right off the turf for the out. Presence of mind to stand up quickly and see if Bautista had strayed a little bit too far at first base. Good play right there by Corey Patterson. Two outs now for Lyle Overbay. He popped up to left field. Oh, they lost the grip on the bat there. Looked like Pine tar slipped a bit as he cut on that high fastball. Two outs here, bottom of the fourth. Blue Jays scored three runs in the bottom of the first. Had three hits in the inning and none since. Bautista going to second. Wieters blocked the ball very well but couldn't find it. And once Bautista saw the catcher turn his back to the infield, he was off and running. Yeah, Wieters actually thought that the ball had gotten by him. But he did a good job of keeping it in front of him. Looked like a breaking ball from Millwood. It's blocked and it's in right in front of him, but he turns to look behind him for the ball. And a heads up play by Bautista, who was not running, then realizes he turned the wrong way and jogs into scoring position. Right, that's a great example of making sure you know where the ball is before you break for the extra base. Scoring position now for Overbay. Breaking ball way outside. Doesn't look like you're going to get too many opportunities against Kevin Millwood tonight. This one comes with two outs. Hit with runners in scoring position and two outs against Millwood. Batters are hitting over 430 against them. Oh, 
Overbay, if you just tuned in, has been dropped down to the seventh spot. He flipped spots with Jose Bautista tonight. Edward misses inside. Three balls, two strikes, two outs here in the fourth. Kevin Millwood against Sean Markham. Millwood looking for his first win of the season. This is his 11th start. He's 0-4. Hard to believe with an ERA of 3-7. He has not won a ball game. This is the deepest into a season he has gone without registering his first win. Popped up. Foul ground, third base, Tejada over by the seats and makes the catch. So Millwood gets over me to pop up. He strands a base runner, but the Orioles still trail the Blue Jays three to nothing. Around building stronger, healthier communities, we focus on physical activity for children and healthy nutrition. And some of the players involved in this? Our honorary divisionary captain is uh, Vernon Wells. We've got Lyle Overbay, Aaron Hill, Ricky Romero, and John McDonald this year as well. And when we look at what's going on at the ballpark this weekend, uh, what event is happening here and how can the uh, fans get involved? Well, we have our rookie league uh, equipment drive, so we're asking people to come down with new and refurbished equipment to gates 3, 5, 10, and 13 tomorrow and Sunday for the ball games. And if they can't get down, they can go to jays.com, bluejays.com slash rookie league and donate right now. It's going to help over 700 kids from 30 Toronto Community Housing Communities play baseball this summer. That's great, Justin. Thanks for your time. Thank you. That's Justin Bob with a great initiative here this weekend for the Jays Care Foundation and Toronto Community Housing. Thanks, Sam. Great uh, effort. 22 years the Rookie League's been going on to help kids get involved in baseball. And you can bring your donations down and make contributions here at the ballpark. And we'd love to have you contribute. Or as you heard, you could make a contribution on BlueJays.com slash Rookie League. Saturday and Sunday right here at Rogers Center. Scott Moore pops it up into center field. Vernon Wells camped under it. Sean Markham has given up five hits to the Orioles so far. But he's got a double play and stranded four. Yeah, he's made pitches when he has had to. He's had trouble with Tejada and Scott. Leadoff runners in the second and fourth inning, but he's gotten tough made pitches when he's had to there's a base hit through the right side for Caesar Asturias sixth hit for the Orioles now comes with one out here in the fifth the thing that you have to like about Sean Markham is when he falls behind or he gets in trouble he's got enough in his arsenal that he can make out looked up the numbers today when you fall behind one and oh you you figure that that is a hitters count but for Markham 
Batters are hitting just 250 against him after he falls behind 1-0. That tells me that he's got enough in there, enough pitches to get out of it and make the pitch to get himself out of a tough situation. We've seen it again here tonight. Corey Patterson takes a pitch outside. Patterson 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Patterson in his second go round with the Orioles. He played 2006 and 2007 in Baltimore. Came up through the Cubs system. He was the third pick overall in the country. June 2000. Had a couple of interesting seasons. In Chicago with the Cubs at 24 home runs in 2004 looked like he was about ready to blossom and really establish himself as a regular player. But he's never really attained that level again. That was his career high in home runs. He also drove in 72 runs in 04. That too, a career high. Yeah, everybody thought that he was going to take the next step and be the superstar, but it hasn't worked out. He spent some time with the Reds. You mentioned the Cubs a couple of times with Baltimore, but he has become a more patient hitter this year. A little different type of batter, taking more advantage of his good speed. Well, he's got to count in his favor now. Three balls and no strikes as Stewart's with a one-out single at first. And this is a danger zone for Sean Markham. We met, mentioned the middle of the order, especially Marquecas and Tejada, how they have hit Markham in the past. If you're going to face him, you just soon face him with nobody on. And Markham is aware of that, too, as he battles back here against Corey Patterson. Marquecas coming into this game was over 450. Tejada was about 440. Adam Jones at 385. So you're right. If you're going to face him, face him with nobody on base. Tejada right now, two for two tonight. It gets him to nine for 18, right at 500. That's what managers like to talk about, managing the lineup. Pitchers managing the lineup. Pay attention to where you are, what the scoreboard is. Get down in the order. Eight, nine, and one. You'd like to be able to retire that portion of the batting order before you get to the meet. Three and two to Patterson. There goes his Sturis. Popped up on the infield. And Carnacion calls for it and makes the catch. Sean Markham initially called for it, but the third baseman came over and said, no, I got it. And what do, you, what do you think he was thinking also, Sean Markham? Double play? Let it bounce? So difficult to predict where that's going to bounce, but he called for it right off the bat. Yeah. Dave Tremblay is out talking with Jim Joyce, the home plate umpire. The only thing I can think is maybe he thought there was catcher's interference on the pop-up. Let's see. Oh, he did. Ooh. It's exactly what it was. I'm surprised Corey Patterson just didn't stay right at home plate. Yeah, and say, hey, point, point to it and say, how did you miss that one? Yeah, that was a great replay that obviously the umpire didn't have the advantage of. He's got to go on sound, but... John Buck sold it perfectly, and Corey Patterson didn't react. If Patterson stops right there in points and says, hey, 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 catcher's interference. Yeah, you're going to be out anyway. It's a pop-up on the infield. Just stay right there and say, hey, he hit my bat. So now Ty Wigginton with two outs. Boy, that was a huge play. If that is called, then, of course, Patterson's safe on first. Asturias is at second. There's only one out. Now you deal with Wigginton and possibly Marquecas. Wigginton's two for two tonight. Can they ask for help on that? Sure. From some of the umpires on the bases? Well, the whole thing that caused the problem was the batter didn't react. 
if the batter reacts that something happened unusual, then, of course, everything is going to be brought into focus. But Jim Joyce, the umpire, can only go by what he hears and what he sees. He didn't hear two distinct sounds, obviously. Mm -hmm. But if the batter stops and stays right at home plate, I mean, where, where's he going anyway? It's a pop-up on the infield. And he knows he hit the catcher's glove. Just stop right there. Now Wigginton's in a hole 0 and 2. Pretty good pitch with the fastball, just missed. 3 0. Blue Jays out in front here, top of the fifth. Again, John Buck digs one out of the dirt, keeps his tourists at first. He got on that ball quickly. Knocked it down. He knows that there's some speed over at first base in his tourists. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Blue Jays have gotten the break here in this inning. The non call of pitcher's interference. Be another full count. Hey, one thing the Orioles have made Markham work. Certainly have. He has thrown a lot of pitches now at 84 here in the fifth inning. His last start, we talked a little bit about it in Arizona after the game. Sean Markham was saying that he felt like his mechanics were off. He said it felt like a spring training game all over again. He actually had a couple of throwing sessions in between the two starts, and that didn't help. Full count, two outs. His stirrups will be on the move. Wigginton pops it foul over toward the Oriole dugout and back behind him the seats. Yeah, it's interesting how mechanics can come and go. And pitchers can get out of whack, even though they only pitch once every fifth day. And that's why Blue Jays are going to skip that fifth spot a couple of times, trying to keep... Markham, Romero, and Cecil on their regular turn as close as possible. A two out walk. In that last start, you can see Markham clearly frustrated with himself, giving up that base on balls. He was saying that he was just trying to relax and with the mechanics being off, just trying to keep the ball down in the zone against Arizona and right now it looks like he's fighting himself a little bit again. This is not a good person to be struggling and facing. Nick Markakis. He's 0 for 2 tonight but he has hit Markham well throughout his career. Two outs Blue Jays up three to nothing. See Markham spinning away in disgust. Not at anything other than his mechanics. Yeah, I was watching him in between some of the other pitches, and he was simulating his arm swing, that he doesn't feel like his arm swing is where it should be. And that's when you take the ball out of the glove and get it into that spot where you want to throw it. Practicing in between pitches to try and get that feel of the mechanics of getting the ball up. Well, obviously, Markham relies so much on touch and feel. He's not overpowering. He can't make a mistake over the middle of the plate. It's not like he can throw 96 like Brandon Morrow and just all of a sudden blow a ball by somebody. So mechanics are essential to his success. Send a jam here. First and second, two outs. Our cake is pops it. Out of play. Let's check in with Sam Cosentino. Well, Buck, I think you guys illustrated it uh, perfectly on the road. Sometimes you can hear from the pitching coach and the bullpen coach, but when you show the shot of the three starting pitchers in Moro, Markham, and Romero talking amongst each other, sometimes that uh, ear or that perspective can also help you. And I think this group is a lot more cohesive in that manner. Uh, that's a great point. There's no question that they're trying to help one another, and you often see that group of five comparing notes. 
fisted him, popped up. Markham will make the catch this time as he really got in on the hands of Nick Markakis to get out of another tough situation. Makes a good pitch when he needed it. He's still up three to nothing. Zone, some of our loyal Blue Jay friends and friends, courtesy of TD Canada Trust. Great perspective, good seats, and a great view of tonight's action. Blue Jays out in front, three to nothing. Three first inning runs have held up so far as Kevin Millwood has found his groove. John Buck, Edwin and Connor shown, and the leadoff batter here in the fifth. Buck struck out on a breaking pitch in the second inning. Kevin Millwood led the American League in ERA in 2005 with the Texas Rangers. And cut the fastball up out of the zone. I said Texas, of course, it was the Cleveland Indians. He was there one year and had a terrific season. Then he went on to Texas, pitched for the Rangers in a very difficult pitching atmosphere. John Buck over the glove of Tejada in the left field. Little humpback liner cleared the third baseman, and John Buck's aboard with his first hit. We talked the last time he was at the plate how strong he is, and there it was on display. I think Millwood got inside and cracked his bat, but he's so strong, he just muscled it over Miguel Tejada in the inner half, and he certainly did crack his bat, but gets it over the glove for a hit. So Bucks aboard for Edwin Encarnacion. Millwood comes right back and jumps ahead with the strike. Orioles have out hit the Blue Jays six to four to this point. But the Blue Jays made the most of some shaky defense and clutch hits in the first. That hit by John Buck was the first hit they've had since the first inning. Just the second base runner. Jose Bautista walked last inning. Two and two. Well, Melwood's always trying to work the corners, both with his fastball and his breaking ball. He's got a wide assortment of pitches, too, but it's more power than Markham's. Yeah, he certainly does. He can pitch up in the zone. He can pitch down in the zone. Ground ball to third. To hot at a second. Scott Moore back to first double play. 
Boy, Tejada really took his time getting the ball to the second baseman, and John Buck was all over Scott Moore at second, who made a pretty good turn. He made an excellent turn at second base with the big man, John Buck, right on top of him. Tejada delivers the ball. Here comes Buck trying to break up the double play. You slide in and then stand up right there. Try and take his legs out, and as a second baseman, the one thing you have to do when you get rid of the ball, you got to get airborne. If you are airborne and you are hit by that base runner, it takes away all the, the pressure of the hit. If you are grounded and you throw that ball and they slide into you, your knee's gone. It's going to be cartwheeled and land in a pretty good position. Boy, Tejada just took his time, and that really put Scott Moore in a tough spot. Two outs now for Fred Lewis. Late on a fastball. Two. Good power pitch right on the outer half. The one thing that I didn't realize that Kevin Mill would have was a good hard sinking fastball. Saw that on that pitch to Encarnacion to get the ground ball. You add that to his fastball up in the zone and that good breaking ball. Decent change up. You can see why he was an ERA leader when he was with the Indians. Yeah, this is his 13th season, and you don't hang around this long without making some adjustments. A lot of movement on that pitch, but it was out of the zone. Mill had threw a no-hitter back in 2003 while pitching for the Philadelphia Phillies. He no-hit the Giants. He's had two 13 strikeout games. He's had a very impressive career. He is now 155 wins against 125 losses. Anytime you get that far over 500, just reflects how dominant you have been throughout your career. He's had two 18 win seasons and a 17 win season. How many did he win with Texas last year? I believe 16 games. 13 and 10. 13 and 10. With a good ERA, 367 in that ballpark. In that ballpark, yeah. that is impressive. You can add about a run and a quarter to everybody else's ERA. You take him out of that ballpark. Kevin Millwood's behind three to nothing, still looking for his first win of the season. He's 0-4. This is his 11th start. Two-two to Fred Lewis. Putting up a battle. Lewis is fouled off another pitch. Fred Lewis back in the lineup tonight. He missed the last two games in Anaheim against the Angels. And then had the off day along with the rest of his teammates yesterday. Three days of rest. Broken back right back to the pitcher. Kevin Millwood's doing his job. Now he needs his hitters to step up a bit. The Orioles trail Blue Jays by three.
which been hurt by some shaky defense back in the first. Game. Yeah, really just one bad inning for Kevin Billwood when the Blue Jays scored their three runs. Sean Markham has worked in and out of trouble all night long. He has stranded six base runners already. He given up six hits, a couple of walks, and four strikeouts. So he has made pitches when he had to. I think the pitch of the game was the pop-up to Marquecas with two on and two outs. Nick Marquecas has hit him hard. If he keeps the inning alive, then he's got to deal with Tejada, who already has two hits tonight. Excuse me, check swing foul ball. 0 oh and 2. Wigginton, Tejada, and Luke Scott have reached Markham. They each have a pair of hits. Excuse me, Markham has given a walk to Scott. Now he strikes out Tejada. I think the whole key for Sean Markham, he's got a great changeup. He's got to get the opposition to swing at him when you've got good arm action and good speed on that ball. That time Tejada can't lay off of it. He's effective when they swing at him. And now gets back to being ahead with that fastball. You put hitters in a swing mentality, that's when they begin to chase. Luke Scott, a single and a walk. Pulled foul. Again, Sean Markham pitching into the sixth inning. Something he's done all year long. Last time out, he lasted just five innings down in Arizona. Combination of pitch count and comfortable lead. He was lifted early. That's probably serving him very well tonight now as he's thrown 93 pitches. A little extra fuel in the tank tonight. Still got a good fastball. Good movement on it. That cutter you just mentioned that he threw right in on the hands of Nick Marcakis. You have to have a good fastball to get it on the hands of Marcakis with runners in scoring position. Luke Scott took that sinking fastball away. Good sequence. Cutter in, sinker away, and Scott showed good patience. Two balls and a strike. That looked like a breaking ball. A little bit slower. Luke Scott keeps a diary of every at bat against every pitcher he faces. Writes down the pitch, writes down the sequence of pitches, how he fares, what he does, and he has that diary he refers to before the next start. Saw him do that in the minor leagues with the Cleveland Indians. That's where he was drafted and developed before being traded off. Smart hitter. He's a very smart, intelligent hitter. Really has a, a plan when he gets into that batter's box of what he wants to do. Combine that with a nice short stroke. Some obvious power. Nine home runs and 20 driven in. In just 130 at bats. Yeah, he doesn't leave anything to chance. He's well prepared when he steps into the box. The only thing that's plagued him over his career has been injuries. He just hasn't been able to stay healthy. And he's not the greatest defensive player. It's always been a challenge for him to stay on the field defensively in one position. Hurt himself playing defense the other day. Diving for a ball in the outfield. And as long as you can hit, you'll have a job in the American League. Pitch. Markham goes back though with the cutter and strikes out his sixth batter here tonight. Second this inning. And the first two since the third inning. Watch where this ball is placed right into the glove of John Buck, who does a nice job of keeping it right there for home plate umpire Jim Joyce to call a strike.
There's the 100 pitch plateau for Markham. Blue Jays had the day off yesterday, so their bullpen is rested. And deep. They've got eight arms out there now. A lot of balance, as you see Sean Camp has picked up the baseball, and he's now starting to get loose. Orioles, on the other hand, didn't get here till about three in the morning. They played a home game and had some weather problems, and plane was late arriving, late departing, and so they're on a little bit of short sleep. They mentioned the Blue Jays had just come through a stretch of 33 games in 34 days. Very demanding schedule. Now they'll shift gears and play nine home games with two off days, including yesterday, before they go out on the road again for another off day in Tampa Bay. And then back out to the West Coast. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Change up, leaders got a piece of it. They throw three two change ups like most pitchers throw. Fastballs. Yeah. Markham has that much confidence in it. I mean, John Buck didn't even hesitate, just threw that change, change up, up down. Change up, and that'll get around the league, and people will know that. But if you've got confidence in that pitch, why not? John Markham strikes out the side here in the sixth. Seven on the night. Miguel Tejada chases a breaking pitch. Back at Rogers Center, Buck Martinez along with Pat Tabler as we start the bottom of the sixth inning. Blue Jays scored three in the first, and that has held up. Aaron Hill had an RBI single in the first inning. Takes a breaking ball for a strike 0 and 2. Kevin Millwood has really slammed the door hard on the Blue Jays since that first inning. And they've had but two base runners. One of those was erased on a double play in the fifth. Oh and two. 
Hard left field drive. Corey Patterson watches it sail into the seats. Home run, Aaron Hill. Home run number seven for Aaron Hill makes it four to nothing. If there is a chink in the armor of Kevin Millwood, it's his giving up the home run this year. That's 11 home runs he's given up now. 0-2 pitch. It looks like he tries to go right after him, but that's right in Aaron Hill's wheelhouse. High pitch, and he gets on top of his second hit of the night. And Cito Gaston loves that because he was out here earlier today. Uh, he likes the result, but I think he likes the approach, too. Very aggressive on the high pitch, and he is a very good high ball hitter. Look at Cito nodding down a dugout. <laughs> you know what I told you? <laughs> Just get it started a little bit early. Get your hands moving. Get that leg down. Get yourself into position to hit. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Yeah, it is simple. <laughs> no. From up here. <laughs> From up here, right on. Second home run in three games for Aaron Hill. That's a good sign. Adam Lynn 0 for 2 tonight. Good curveball on the corner. Kevin Millwood has now given up 11 home runs this year. Nine of them solo home runs. Well, one thing you can't fault these guys that have gotten off to slow starts for is lack of work. They have all put in their work, all trying to figure out what it will take to get them going. Adam Lynn has gotten to the point where he's pretty close as well. Dwayne Murphy watches his hitters religiously, not only during batting practice, but during the course of a ball game. And he recognizes both Lind and Hill are getting very close to where they should be. And how about all the times we don't see him out on the field? They're probably back in that batting cage. Taking flips, working with Wayne Murphy about getting set, getting ready, working on the mechanics. Through the course of a day, counting batting practice and the time you spend in the cage, what do you think? 100, 150 swings? No, at least. Dwayne Murphy puts in so much time with his hitters in that batting cage, and they all have a different routine. Line drive right at Scott at first. Or Wigington, excuse me. Let's check in with Sam Casentino. Well, Buck, you may have uh, Cito Gaston and Dwayne Murphy, but the secret weapon was brought out today, and that was Bruce Walton, who fired early batting practice to Aaron Hill. If you go back a month ago, almost to the day, in fact, the 29th of April, when Bruce Walton came out for extra work with John Buck to get him started earlier, that very same thing happened today. The result, a couple of hits and a home run for Aaron Hill. Well, and Bruce Walton will tell you, and I know this for a fact, he would tell you that's the way he was when he pitched, too. He got guys out of slumps. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he moved up. <laughs> now, he is happy to help out these hitters, and boy, oh, boy, if that's the case with Aaron Hill, hopefully he will continue the way John Muck has. Vernon Wells pulls it out of play, foul down the left field line. Oh and two. Blue Jays out in front four to nothing behind Sean Markham. Aaron Hill has driven in two tonight. Here's as though Markham's night may be done as Sean Kemp continues to throw down in the Blue Jays pen. Yeah, he's coming in the game the way he's throwing a pitch here and there, standing around. He's ready to come in. He's just biding his time. But Markham with another solid outing here tonight. If, in fact, his night has come to an end, the pitch of the ball game, in my mind, was the cutter to Markakis in the fifth. Two on, two outs. He jammed and yep. got the pop-up right back to the mound. It seemed like he made pitches when he had to. He's left some runners on base. Ball fouled off. Three to nothing lead in the first inning. It 
It seemed like the Orioles had runners on base, and they were one big fly away from tying up the ball game. How many times have you seen horses like Sean Markham know they're near the end and turn it up a notch? He struck out the side in the sixth. Knew he was over 100 pitches, and he was going to finish with the flurry. Probably looked over his shoulder and saw Sean Camp getting up and getting ready. And reached back for a little bit more. Sean Markham gets it. Uh huh. Three two. Vernon Wells hammers it left field. This got a chance. Get up. Gone. Vernon Wells has just moved into second place by himself in career home runs breaking the tie with Joe Carter two hundred and four career home runs the impressive thing about this swing watch the hands how quickly they come through that strike zone he waits back on the off speed pitch and just rips it into the Bullpen of the Blue Jays for another home run. Well, that's a milestone home run for sure. Vernon Wells now trails only Carlos Delgado. Rick Langford, the bullpen coach, has that baseball. It's one to keep a hold of. Number 12 on the season for Wells. Line drive left field, but right at Corey Patterson, and Batista is retired. Two home runs, two line drives here in the inning. Adam Lynn scorched one right at the first base, man, and then Bal Bautista almost took the hand off of Corey Patterson in left field with that line drive. Carlos Delgado on top, and now Wells in second place all by himself. A little pop-up left field. This tourist out, and he'll make the grab. But the Blue Jays tack on a couple of more. Aaron Hill with his second home run in three games. His second RBI of the night, a shot on a high fastball, pleases his manager. Then Vernon Well. Let's take a look at his pitching line. It's brought to you by MLB 10, the show only on PlayStation. Well, for the 10th time in 11 starts, Sean Markham gives Cito Gaston and the Blue Jays six innings of work, at least six innings. He gives up six hits, 
two walks. He ends up with seven strikeouts, which is one off his season high, which he set last time out against the Arizona Diamondback. He was in and out of trouble all night long, but he is in line for the win, and what a month of May it has been for him. He'll turn things over to Sean Camp now with a 5 nothing lead. A couple of insurance runs, two home runs in the bottom of the sixth. 23rd appearance for Camp, the right-hander. Another great start for Markham here in the month of May. Came into this game with a 232 ERA in the month of May for his career. That's second in the majors to Josh Johnson of the Marlins. So May has been his best month, and he's improved upon that. He drops his ERA now to 259. He went in at 282. A ball in two strikes to the Orioles center fielder, Adam Jones. Jones lined out to the shortstop. Good play by Gonzalez. Gonzalez going to be tested again. Big two hopper. One out. You were talking about big pitches. I thought the last time Jones was up in the fourth inning, they had a couple of runners on. He had a good swing at a ball and happened to hit it right at the shortstop. Well, you put it in the shortstop's hands, and you could be pretty sure they're going to turn it quickly, and that's what they did. 6 4 3 double play end of the fourth. Scott Moore, the second baseman, makes the first pitch strike. Ooh, how about that left turn right there with that slider? That's a pitch that hasn't really been sharp for him until recently. He's always had a good slider, but he hasn't had that late movement. That last one was terrific. And then he does that. Hard to cover both sides of the plate. Yeah, if you have two pitches, outstanding pitches, you can get major league hitters out. You have three coming out of that bullpen throwing strikes like Camp does. You can see why his numbers are very good this year. Two up, two down here in the seventh. You can enjoy the 2010 baseball season with MLB.TV. Enjoy over 2,000 games live or on demand in HD quality. Packages starting at $99.99. Visit BlueJays.com for more details. Corey Patterson, or excuse me, Cesar Asturias is hitting here in the ninth spot. He is singled and struck out. Blue Jays late at 5 0 here, top of the seventh. Another ground ball to Hill, ranging to his left, guns down Asturias. Three ground ball outs for Sean Camp. Blue Jays out in front, 5 0. Markham looking for his fifth win.
Commentator clothing provided in part by Z Zenya. Statistical information provided by Stats Inc. Music provided by Universal Canada. Bottom of the seventh inning. New pitcher coming out of the Orioles' bullpen will be David Hernandez, the big right-hander. Hernandez was taken out of the rotation and dropped into the bullpen. He had made eight starts and had a 1-5 and five record as a starter. If that just happened recently for the Baltimore Orioles. Hernandez going to the bullpen. The thinking in Baltimore is Hernandez, once through the lineup, is very good. But then his stuff falters a little bit. And they think that he is better suited coming out of the bullpen now. Lyle Overbay, 0 for 2 tonight. A couple of pop-ups. A breaking ball in there. Ball and two strikes. Hernandez had been one of their top starting prospects throughout the minor league system and it just seems as though he may be better suited to work out of the bullpen control has been a problem so has 28 walks and 27 strikeouts but he's a strong kid big powerful arm and a guy that's always had a lot of success in the minors you look at his numbers also first time through second time through a lineup they're, they're pretty good number you get to that third time through the lineup, batters are hitting over 350 against him, so they feel like he projects more coming out of the bullpen. Overbay pops it up in left field over toward the line. It's Corey Patterson. And he makes the catch. Kevin Millwood was roughed up a bit and let down by his defense back in the first inning, but then again, the long ball proved to be a problem for him in the sixth. Given up 12 home runs now this year. Gave up three in the first inning. But only two of them were earned. One walk, a couple of strikeouts for Millwood. Still searching for that first win. And if they don't come back in a hurry, it's going to be another start for Kevin Millwood without a win. John Buck had a base hit in his last hit bat. Came against Millwood in the fifth. Jammed, popped up. Wiginton into foul ground makes the catch. Two up, two down here. Casey Jansen loosening up. Sean Camp worked the seventh, had a very quick seventh inning. Three up, three down, all ground ball outs. Would you stay with a pitcher who has an easy inning like that and bring him back? Or, But Jansen hasn't pitched for a while. Mm -hmm. And you look at the score of the game, that factors into it in the manager's mind. So you say, okay, well, I got camp tonight. I know it's 5 nothing, and Jansen needs to work. He's been effective, so we'll get him an inning of work and then see where we're at. And you can bring camp back then. Tomorrow or the next quicker, day. Right? Yep. I mean, that's the one thing that pitching coaches, managers discuss all the time is how frequently has a guy pitched? How many pitches did he make during those respective starts? And how often can we use him? Popped up a mile high in the shallow center field. This Duras back, Jones calls him off and makes the catch. So David Hernandez comes in and makes quick work with the bottom third of the lineup here in the seventh. Blue Jays out in front. Casey Jansen looks like he's going to come on to work the eighth inning.
the at-home play of the game presented by Burger King. Uh, Adam, excuse me, Aaron Hill takes this high 0-2 pitch from Kevin Millwood and deposits it into the stands. Seventh home run of the season for Aaron Hill. His second hit and second RBI of the night. It's always good to see when Aaron Hill is starting to hit a home run. And a reminder to visit BlueJays.com to register for a chance to win prizes with the Burger King Super Fan Contest. Casey Jansen comes on to work the eighth after a very good inning by Sean Kemp. Jansen's 19th appearance. You mentioned Jansen hasn't worked in a while. It's been six days. He worked an inning down in Arizona and looked very strong. A couple of strikeouts. And there are his numbers this year. 18 strikeouts in the 20 and third innings that he has worked. Sharply on the ground. Overbay backs up a couple of steps and throws a strike to Jansen covering first. He made that look easy. Jansen did his part. Lyle Overbay is an excellent fielding first baseman. Sometimes you have to give ground. Even when a speedy runner is coming down first base, you want to make sure you get the big hop. He did, and then he led his pitcher for the first out. Went out here in the eighth for Ty Wigan. He's had a perfect night. Two balls and no strikes. What you try to do with people in your bullpen is keep everybody as sharp as possible. And there are just days when you have to pitch a reliever. Popped up. Foul territory. Over Bay over near the seats. Leans in and beyond his reach. But a pitching coach will keep track of every outing. Number of pitches, number of innings, of course, how frequently it works. And then he'll look at that from time to time and say, you know what, we got to get Casey an inning tonight. No matter what the situation is, we got to get him an inning. He's been sitting there too long. Knock off some of the rust. Uh, do they take into account how many times they get up during the game also? I imagine that's important, too. Yeah, and it depends on what kind of effort. Blue Jays relievers don't throw much on the side. They don't have an awful lot of side session so they just throw enough just to stay fresh and they'll do a lot of it during batting practice just out on the field 2-2 two -two to Wigginton on the ground perfectly positioned Aaron Hill makes the play let's check in with Sam Cosentino Buck on the topic of pitchers you talked about the Blue Jays playing 33 and 34 will four off days in June a fifth starter will only be needed here June 1st and June 12th and some of the options right now Brian Tallett last pitched on May 25th for Las Vegas Brad Mills May 26th and how about Jesse Litch who last pitched May 27th which would pit him on his fifth day if he were to make that start Tuesday June 1st that starter still to be announced although Cito Gaston is being asked that on a daily basis. Thank you, Sam. And the options are, are many, obviously. And one problem with Jesse Lynch, he's not eligible to come off the disabled list till June 4th. He's on the 60-day disabled list, so he won't be eligible for that start, but certainly a possibility for the next time it comes around. I think they have an idea. If you read between the lines and you listen to Cito Gaston, during his scrum before the game. I think they have an idea of what they want to do when that fifth starter spot comes around, but they're not tipping their hand. Two balls and no strikes to Nick Marquecas, who lines it into left field. Fred Lewis over quickly. Marquecas with a big turn. He's headed for second. Here's the throw to second base. The tag. He is out of there. Fred Lewis got over to the foul line and made a terrific throw. Second time tonight, the Blue Jays have nailed an Oriole base runner at second. Wells did it early in the ball game, back in the first, and this time Marquette is with good speed, but he gets gunned down by Fred Lewis. Good defense.
14 action, live in high definition. 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, tomorrow on Sportsnet East and Ontario Channels. UFC 114 preliminaries. David Hernandez in his second inning of work, and how about the defense the Blue Jays have shown here tonight? Vernon Wells throwing out Ty Wigginton at second base into first, and right there, Fred Lewis with the outfield assist to throw out Nick Markakis, and now Lewis will lead it up. How many times have you seen that? What was impressive about that, just getting to that ball, remember it was Nick Markakis at the play, left-hander, so he's shading him into the gap. Ball sliced down the line. Gets over there quickly to cut it off, but then throws a, a strike to second base to get the out. Well, when we first heard that Fred Lewis was coming to the Jays, he was acquired on April 15th. And they said, well, he's, he's okay, probably an extra outfielder, and got a little speed, but not a great base stealer, and he's not a very good outfielder. Base hit right field. Fred Lewis with his second hit of the night, two for four. I remember the conversation we had with a scout who said, well, he's not a very good outfielder. And we both said, you got to watch him day in, day out. Watch him for a week, and he is a good outfielder. He's an exceptional outfielder. He gets to balls that people don't expect him to uh -huh. get to. He gets to balls in the gap. He saved the game in Seattle. And he ran a ball down in the outfield in the gap that Vernon Wells wasn't going to get to. That play right there, not many outfielders even get to it, let alone make a good throw and, and they get the guy second. And throw, right. Oh, so often in this industry, you hear scouts go around and say, well, yeah, that guy's not a very good outfit. And they make judgments, and then they just pass along that rumor, and it just takes on a life of its own. And Hill, left field. He's got the distance. But it is foul. Put a charge in that one. But it's 0-2. Same spot he was in last time. He was at the dish. And Homer. Fouls off a pretty good pitch there. Now it's a slow, steady climb for Aaron Hill. Kevin Gregg is loosening up. Camp worked the seventh. Jansen worked the eighth. And looked like Greg will work the ninth. Strike three call. Tune in on tomorrow for game two of the Jays Orioles series from Rogers Center. 12.30 p.m. Eastern, 9.30 a.m. Pacific time, starting with Jays Connected. That's a 12.30 p.m. start. Jays connected. Jays take on the Orioles in game two of this three-game series. Swing and a miss from Lynn. No balls and two strikes. Hernandez has thrown a lot of strikes since he's come into the game. This is his second inning of work. Might be a good spot for him coming out of the bullpen. You don't have to think too much. Just come out, give me what you have for a couple of innings. Well, he makes quick work of Adam Lynn. Strikeout right on the corner. Good he, fastball. He certainly has enough fastball. That's 94 miles an hour on the outside part of the plate. Second strike out of the inning. Well, Bernard Wells, he went deep in his last at bat. That gives him 12 home runs on the season. And more importantly, gives him 204 for his career. He's moved into sole possession of second place on the franchise home run list. Base hit left field. First pitch swinging Vernon Wells. Another multi-hit game for Vernon Wells. 
grounded out his first two times up. Homers and then bangs a single to left field to give Bautista a chance to drive in another run. Jose Bautista into the fifth spot for just the second time this season. Bautista and Vernon Wells lead the majors in home runs by a duo. They have 27 home runs combined. Orioles are right up there also with uh, teammates forming a duo of home runs. Ty Wigginton and Luke Scott. And breaking ball. We just saw the Diamondbacks duo of Mark Reynolds with 12 and Kelly Johnson with 12. They're second in the major leagues to Bautista and Wells. How about Vladdy Guerrero and Nelson Cruz? What a bounce back season for Guerrero. Vladdy Guerrero is headed to the All Star game, in my estimation. 12 home runs. I know he's hitting about 330. Yeah. He's got to be up there with <laughs> RBIs, too, doesn't yeah, he? He's up there in everything. Team. Bautista with the count in his favor. Three balls and a strike. Two on, two outs here. In the Blue Jays, eight. Bautista has talked about his home runs. He has 15 home runs, just one off his career high. And he speaks about not trying to hit home runs, just trying to hit the ball hard. Yeah, you do that and good things are going to happen. You don't start thinking about lifting the ball. You let your natural reactions come out. He had a great September last year, and he has carried it into this year. Just to finish up a thought on Guerrero, he leads in RBIs. He's fourth in home runs, and he's hitting 339. I think, I think he's there. Bautista strikes out. Hernandez strikes out three in the inning. Blue Jays strand two. We go to the night. It's all Blue Jays. Kevin Gregg swing pitches to Tejada, who swings at the first pitch. Looks like that ball hit Tejada right in the face as it bounced off home plate. 
Certainly did. Maybe in his lip. Kevin Gregg, third reliever to pitch tonight. Take a look at this first pitch to Tejada. Goes down and you know, looks like I hit him in the side of the helmet. You don't expect that. Gregg's the third reliever to work here. Sean Camp, Casey Jansen, now Kevin Gregg, the closer in a non save situation. Trying to get some work. It's been a while since Kevin Gregg's been on the mound. It's been five days. Last pitched in Arizona. Gave up a run in the one inning that he worked in that game. Command has been an issue a little bit his last couple times out. Two and two to Tejada. And that's a real problem for a manager. You don't want to pitch him. If you don't have a save situation, then you go four or five days and you don't have one. And now all of a sudden he's got some rust. But then if you use him in non-save situations, sure enough, you're going to have four in a row and he won't yeah. be available for that fourth one. Well, that's what makes it nice for Cedar Gaston. He's got some veterans down there. That ball's rolled into the center field for a leadoff single. You've got some veterans there who have closed in the past. So if you need an extra closer you have one well, he's used Frazier of course he can use downs but Greg is the guy that has earned his position and done a good job there so Tejada has a three hit night and now it'll be Luke Scott First pitch strike. Sean Camp had a one, two, three, seven, three ground ball outs. Casey Jansen came in and got two more ground ball outs and then gave up a base hit to Nick Marcakis, who unexpectedly broke for second with two outs and was thrown out by Fred Lewis. Cut on and missed, and Tejada will advance to second. Wild pitch judge to Kevin Gregg as Tejada moves up. You know, that's okay. I like seeing the, the pitch having some bite on it again from Kevin Gregg. So much so that Luke Scott swings right over the top of it. He has nine base on balls this season, four of them coming in the last two times he's been on the mound. He has had excellent control. There you go. Strikeout for Kevin Gregg. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. We're in the ninth. One out. Blue Jays up five to nothing. Kevin Gregg jumps out in front of Matt Wieters. Sean Markham went six innings, gave up six hits, no runs, walked a couple, and struck out seven. Good Sean, splitter. Sean finished with a flourish, didn't he? Yeah, he knew he was getting near the end and struck out the side in the sixth. Tejada, Scott, and Weeders. Just a little going away present. 0 and 2. Struck him out. Back to back strikeouts for Kevin Gregg. Gregg pounding it. Looked like the exact same pitch that he struck Luke Scott out with. The cutter on the outside part of the plate. Orioles down to their last out. Center fielder Adam Jones. Last chance to extend his hitting streak. Came into the game with a 13 game hit streak. That was a career high, or is a career high, for Adam Jones. 
He's hit the ball hard twice tonight. Lined out to the shortstop and then hit a ball hard right at the shortstop for a double play. A ball and a strike. Blue Jays have hit two more home runs tonight. Hill with his seventh. Wells with his twelfth. They both came in the sixth inning against Kevin Millwood. Curveball. I've seen a good cutter tonight. It's turned over his fastball. Way outside. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Struck him out. Kevin Gray strikes out the side in the ninth. Blue Jays strike out 10 on the game. Vernon Wells with his 12th home run. Hill was in the seventh. A little insurance that came in the sixth. Sean Markham wins his fifth, 5-0. We'll be back to Rogers Center after this.